Hey everyone, this is Michelle Baker, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial showing you how to make a greeting card in Adobe InDesign. So first we want to set up our template in Adobe InDesign. So if you click on Adobe InDesign, we're going to go to File, New, Document. Now, as you can see, this greeting card is folded in half at five inches. So when it's not folded in half, it's actually 10 inches landscape. So that's horizontal. It's going to be 10 inches horizontally and seven inches vertically. So when you're setting up your template, you can click on new file, print, and come over here to the preset details. And you can actually title this if you want to. It'll stay in your Adobe InDesign templates as greeting card. We can call it a five by seven. I like to work in inches for the units. It's easier for me to understand. And so I would change the width to 10. Remember, because when we fold it in half, it's five. And the height is going to be seven. You do want to work in an orientation of landscape because we're folding the paper in half. We're going to do two pages, one for the outside, one for the inside. Um, they don't have to be facing pages. And the columns need to be two to give us a left side and a right side. We're going to leave the margins at 0.5 and come down to the bleed, which I'll explain as I'm placing the file inside the InDesign file, the template. Just click the arrow up once for 0.125. And I'll explain what that means and what that does. Now you can click create, but before you do, I want to show you the templates over here on this side. You can find templates for a greeting card, but for this exercise, I'm going to show you how to set up your own. So just click create and it'll give us our templates. All right, so here they are. If I hit command minus, I can show you both pages. This is the outside front, outside back, inside right, inside left. Now, to place your artwork inside, you'll go to a rectangle frame tool. And if you pay attention to the ruler on top, I want to put my, my cursor right on the five and on the red line. The red line is the bleed. And what that does is it allows you to stretch your artwork all the way on the canvas like this by clicking and dragging, you want to fill all the way to the bleed because our printer doesn't print on the paper all the way to the edge. So inside our eight and a half by 11 document, we'll be sitting this 10 by seven card. And what we'll do is we will slice it out with an X-Acto knife to make a professional cut. And once you have your place um, holder rectangle tool in place, you can actually uh, copy and paste this on the other side as well. And then you can take both, select both and hit copy and paste and bring it down to the bottom. And then you're ready to go. You've got all your uh, placeholders in place. Okay, now about the art. Let me show you how I did that. So I actually created um, just a couple sketches. I'm gonna double click and open with Adobe Illustrator so that you can see my sketch work. You don't have to sketch. You can use photographs and import them in if you like, or you can um, you know, paint something, take a picture of it, um, in, or you can color something in Photoshop. But what I did is I sketched a sailboat. Um, I sketched it in pencil first. But in order for it to trace well in Adobe Illustrator, you actually need to ink it in with a Sharpie. So once you bring your photograph in, ideally you don't want to take a picture with your hand in the way. Um, I did this just for this demonstration. I'm going to cut my hand out um, to show you how I got this little sailboat to turn into a vector sailboat. Once the picture's inside Adobe Illustrator, you can click it and go to Image Trace. It's traced my hand, which I'll cut out. Then click expand, and this is where I'll cut it out. I'm just going to grab this eraser tool for this demonstration and just cut out what I don't want. And you can do the same. You can cut out anything that appears in your picture um, that you don't want. 
I accidentally cut out um, a little too much of the silver. So just take your time, which I'm kind of rushing for the sake of time in our demo. <clears throat> And I just went around the sailboat because that's all I want. So I click on the whole thing and hit shift command G, which ungroups everything. And then I can grab, um, well, I thought it ungrouped everything. <laughs> shift command G to ungroup. And then I can just get this um, sailboat. And bring it out here and show you what I've got. So I do wanna keep the white pieces that are inside the sails because that's where I'm gonna put my color. And um, I could have done my cutout a little better. I cut accidentally cut like this side of the black line and I like those black lines. But you know, once you get your pieces out, you can actually color by going up to, um, your swatches up here and you can click on this library button and get um, color books, um, and this would give me all kind of uh, swatch colors that, you know, or you could import a picture in and sample it with um, the ink dropper to see what colors you want. But I can turn this sailboat, you know, any, any color that I want. And so, and ultimately what I ended up with, I'll show you um, my sailboat art. I ended up with this nice little palette of blues, sailboats, and grays. You see how nice that turned out? Just a little hand sketch sailboat. And then um, I imported it into um, the greeting card that I was making. So let me show you how I, I set up my template for the greeting card. I went to, I'm still in Adobe Illustrator, you can see the bottom of So this is my art for the card. So I went to File, New. I want to make five by seven artboards. I want to make four of them. I want to make sure it's in CMYK, color for printing, and 300 pixels per square inch. And then I hit Create, and I get four blank artboards. And then I took the square tool the rectangle tool and chose like a color blue that I wanted. And I just covered the artboard. And then I went over to my sailboat art and I copied and pasted it into um, into the artboards like this. And I then I made a little space where I'm going to put my text in InDesign. So I did like this because I'm going to put my text here in InDesign. You can put it in Illustrator, um, but InDesign is the best place to, to put your text in. And then I proceeded to just make each of the artboards. Let me show you how I did my waves. So I actually just took a square rectangle tool like this and I took the eraser tool and I cut out my waves like this. And then I pasted, I copied and pasted my boats on top. You see, I could put a, a sailboat behind it if I wanted to. Um, so watch this, I could could put a big one up front, but if I wanted to give the image that this is behind the wave, then I just go to object, arrange, and send it to the back. And then I've sent it to, I sent it back behind the wave. That's just an idea. Okay, so now we've got the front of the card, the back of the card, the inside left, the inside right. And once you get it like you like it, uh, you just hit file and you save your your greeting card art, and you go back to your InDesign file. And we're gonna place the art here on the front. So click on that square and go to File, Place, Greeting Card Art, but make sure you've clicked on Show Import Options. 
because it shows you all four artboards right here. And I want to put the front artboard right there. Now it didn't stretch it all the way to this red line bleed. Now what that's for again is we want our artwork to stretch to that line because we're going to do a crisp professional cut with an exacto knife. So you can go up to there's two ways you can stretch it. You can double click it and grab the anchors and hit shift and stretch it to the bleed mark. But I like to for this go to object fitting fill frame proportionately. And that does a good job. Now I click here, go to file, place for the back of the card, double click. This is the one I want. Okay, I want to fill it all the way to the bleed, object, fitting, fill frame proportionately. And there you go. Okay, at the bottom of the card, um, I want to actually place some text. So I'm going to open up the file quick and show you. OK. <clears throat> so for the inside of my card, I placed a photograph. Let me show you how I did that real quick. So I'm going to just take it and move it over here to, to recreate it for you. Um, I went to this rectangle frame tool that holds, it's like a placeholder. And I drew a box, just a random size. And with my selection tool, I just made sure it was centered. It gives me this pink guide to tell me that it's centered. And then I went up to file, place, and it took me to my photograph here of me and Michael Steven shows me the photograph and I put it in. Now I want to fill it proportionally. So I, while it's clicked, I go up to object, fitting, fill frame proportionately. Now I can double click it and stretch it out to get it just like I like it. Make sure you hit shift. And I just want to give a little bit of a more of a close up shot of me and Michael Steven. So just like this would be fine. And then I put this white um, frame around it by clicking on the stroke, click on the box and go to the stroke and turn it white. I could have turned it any color, but I thought white looked nice. And then I just increased the weight up to like 15 and it gave me a nice white box around our picture. And then um, I came over here, I took that box and actually just copied and pasted it because I wanted it the exact same size and it was just quicker this way. But I wanted to take the picture out. So I double clicked and got this orange box and hit delete. And that gave me my box with our picture in it. Um, but I do want it to be completely filled. So I click on the box and go up here. And not only does it have a stroke, but I want it to have a paper fill. And then I took my text tool and I actually wrote inside. I did a text frame right in the middle. And I wrote, you know, dear Michael Steven, happy birthday. And that's how I got um, this. So I can actually delete um, what was what was here and show you the finished product. Okay, and just so we have them the right size. So this was my final product. So you can have a lot of fun with this. You don't have to import art uh, that's vector. You can import photographs from Photoshop. You can import artwork from um, you know, Photoshop that you've scanned in and say you want to watercolor it in Photoshop. You can do that too. Um, you can import all kinds of things for your card and be creative. Um, for the font, I do want to show you. Um, so once you place your artwork in here, you can put your, your text on top of it. So um, if you don't have any pretty fonts on your computer, you can go to defont.com and get some free fonts. And what I did is I just clicked on calligraphy because that's the kind of font that I wanted. And I went down here to the preview and typed happy birthday so I could see what it looked like. And it gives you a, a preview of happy birthday actually written out. 
And so I just found one that I liked and I clicked uh, download, like on the breakfast font or let's see the Austin font, you can click download. Once it downloads, just double click it. Okay, and then click on the TTF file, that's your font. And then click install and it's gonna download it and install it alphabetically. This one's called Austin, so it'll be in the A's when we go back and look at it. So you'll highlight the font and go up to your, your character font tools, and then you'll find the Austin right here, written alphabetically. Now, if that's too big, uh, you know, just, just bring it down some until it fits in your box or make your text box bigger. There you go. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it helps you get started creating your greeting card. And I look forward to seeing what you create. Thanks, y'all. Oh, one last thing I need to tell you before I go. It's important to package your file. Let me show you how to do that. You have to package your file to bring it to the classroom. Otherwise, it won't bring your fonts and it won't bring your pictures and it won't bring your artwork. So make sure that um, when you're finished, go to File, Package. It shows me here that I have three fonts and I've got um, some pictures. And you just click Package and Save. And it wants to put everything in a new folder. So um, I'm just going to name this one um, April 15 and click package. And that way I can, I can show you the folder. Once it's done packaging, you'll have a folder named April 15. I'm not sure where I just sent it to, but I can find it really quickly by actually just searching documents and um, typing in April 15. And I uh, should be able to find it. Right there. And so um, your, your package folder would look something like this. Here it is. Um, let me bring it over to my tutorial. Okay. So here's the package folder right here. You would click this and save it to your flash drive and it has everything that you need to bring to class. It has your InDesign file. It has the links to your artwork and your pictures. So be sure to package your InDesign file um, that you're working on and bring it to class. All right. Thanks y'all. I look forward to seeing what you create. Bye-bye.